Welcome to the game. You join me on Into Battle with El Torero and Ickens. Ickens playing in the, the east, El Torero in the west. Uh, let's just get the game started and we'll see what's going on. Uh, this is a pretty small map. It's got some very flat areas if we look at uh, the, the contour view. And there's two large elevated areas uh, and some smaller ones in the corner with nice ramps going up to each. Uh, both players have chosen light vehicles for their starting factory which is uh, interesting. Uh, if we look at the pathfinding view we can see they can get up all the ramps but they can't get up the cliffs. Which as much as you'd expect. Uh, those darts Scouting out Ickens' is starting point for El Torero. Um Meanwhile, Ickens is uh, doing slightly better on economy at 7 mass against 5, uh, because he started next to 2 metal points and close to a third. Whereas El Torero on his, his elevated starting point, uh, as he says, has some energy from those wind generators. But only one metal point to start with, and his commander has now come out to uh, to take more catch up economically. There's a bit of uh, dart toing and froing in the centre there. Uh, but a scorcher also coming out for Altero and coming in behind these darts to uh, to head them off. Not that it'll be needed if they uh, come so close to Altero's commander. Uh, El Torero playing with the Commander Junior in this game, and uh, if we go over the other side of the map, we see Ickens going for a Recon Commander. That uh, jumping ability that the Recon Commander has uh, is likely to be useful on this map with these uh, small cliffs that it can jump attack. over, but we'll see how that turns out. Um, so El Torero is doing pretty well at the moment. He's Deflected Ikens' attacks so far, though they've only been uh, weak ones with darts. Uh, though he's not gone so far as to attack Ikens' base, it is, his initial scout, uh, sorry, his dart that was scouting it, has uh, got there and bit the dust. Um, and he's got another one that's kind of hovering outside. Trying to, to look at it without getting so close and getting destroyed. However, the three Scorchers are coming out now to uh, put pay to that. And Dickens himself coming forward to, to take more metal points. Metal points are really the name of the game. Dickens now, s well, still slightly ahead by two metal points. Um, sorry, two. Two metal per second uh, on metal. However, El Torero now winning on uh, energy with those those wind generators. Um, El Torero is uh, stopping his metal expansion to uh, to do some reclaim and uh, also to build lotuses to defend against uh, any further any further delts coming in from Ikins. Which uh, also means that Higgins is going to get further ahead. Uh, that Higgins now is stopping to do the same thing, building a Lotus on this side. Though uh, it's an interesting place for us, as it's not quite close enough to this gap to cover it. See, there's another dart coming through for El Torero, but... Uh, well, the interesting battle wasn't very interesting. Uh, it's on this side of the map. Scorchers coming in, uh, one getting lost to this leveller which is foolishly going up to the slope there where it's going to have to go a long way around to, to protect this side. Um, this Scorcher was chasing off the other Scorcher but it's given up, leaving it free to, uh, I have to come around by a different route. If it gets too close to El Toro though it won't, uh, the different route won't have helped much. However more coming in. Uh, they're spreading out to cover the pass right now. Obviously waiting to see how well this attack goes before deciding uh, whether to commit and or where to. 
Dom missed the chance to uh, destroy that Lotus before it's finished, but manages to get away with a few hit points remaining. Um, Ickens has uh, morphed his commander to level 1 now, um, which gives him shotgun and energy cell. Shotgun is a good, a good, a uh, good weapon to use against uh, light, scouty, and raidy units. Um, scorches among them. The dog going around the side here to to, to get in to uh, to get past these scorches, which are, are chasing off the red scorches. Um, Ickins comes up to, to build a radar tower. That's uh, really good use as. If we uh, if we look at his view, uh, it gives him a lot of insight into what's going on in El Torero's base and how much stuff he's got and where the defences are. So right away he knows he can send the Scorchers in this way. However, there are Lotuses there. It's not completely safe for them. And that dart that went all the way around uh, managed to get wiped out by the Lotus. So good investment there, obviously. Leveler comes in, manages to take out one Scorcher. Make it out with just over half its energy. Ickins building a stinger. It's an interesting choice here, given that nothing, nothing really heavy has come out yet. However, the leveler and the ravager are uh, a start along that direction. Um, but the, the stinger is gone, or the stinger nano frame is gone, rather. Um, the economics situation is now uh, level. El Torero moving his commander away to take out this south corner, south uh, southeast corner, sorry. Um, but of course that does put him at a disadvantage uh, with this fighting in the centre. It means he won't be able to replay many of these wrecks that he really should be able to get access to. Um, however, he has left a mason behind him. Whereas, uh, yeah, Ickens' is first mason, well, first and only mason, is busy... Uh, Assisting construction, dude. That's that's what Kozak is for. Uh, and he has a second one doing the same thing and blocking the exit. So good work, the Masons. Um, he's got one more Ravager queued up. Um, also another jump there. That's interesting work. Pickens very much hard pressed now by these Ravagers. Um, and that's it, he's lost his commander to those three Ravagers, though he did take out one of them before he died. Ravagers now bunched up a little too much. Um, bad for them, uh, especially given that they were already weakened, are now getting stuck in amongst these wrecks. Uh, but another Ravager comes out, it's not going to be able to take on these three on its own. El Torero looking a bit pretty over here, uh, leaving his commander idle temporarily, obviously uh, has better things to do. Uh, I managed to take out a, a mason from Ickins, which explains why Ickins is so light on masons. Um, if we look at his build queue here, he's got five five more ravagers queued up, obviously uh, trying to, to match Ickins' ravager army. Um, followed by a leveler, which is not so good as uh, it's a riot vehicle and there's no raiders coming out for Rickens. Um, then a slasher, which will be very appropriate, and then another mason to help him build up. Uh, whereas if we if we look at Ickens' build queue, he's uh, sticking to ravagers. So I suppose that's a strategy that's that's doing well for him so far. Um, going to help him to get through all of these lotuses and of course his, his ravagers already outnumber El Torero's so he'll be able to do a lot of damage. However oh, still very nervous about attacking directly he could totally get away with it right now um, there's only a few laser towers around uh, and perhaps he'll do that once he's got out to this position he'll come back around for an attack from this direction. Oh no, he's leaving them there. Perhaps, ah oh, yeah, he's uh, doing some attacking here. 
taking out Alteraro's metal points. Um, but they've they've been there for a while. They've already made cost. Um, and uh, El Torero now quite far ahead on the economy. Uh, Ikins looks like he's going to be going up here to attack these metal points, but um, he'll meet El Torero's commander while he's there. Um, El Torero building more wind generators, interesting. But uh, what he needs up here is a stinger, really. His commander's starting to look very exposed, while on the other side of the map, Ikins is. Uh, walking into his base. So El Torero is actually uh, doing quite well, he's dodging the fire quite well, though not, not perfectly though. But he's yet to kill one Ravager and he's on about a quarter health now, so it doesn't look like he'll get out of there alive. Uh, especially as he, he doesn't have the, the jumping ability that Ikens' his commander had. Oh, but doing very well for a while at walking around the Ravager to uh, to, to stop it uh, rotating its barrel fast enough to attack him directly, but uh, in the end, couldn't, he couldn't outrun it forever. The Ravage is now attacking from the worst possible direction. They, they've managed to come into the intersection of all of the, the Lotuses, however, there are just too many of them. Uh, there's a lot of chat in the uh, in the chat uh, of spectators talking about a different game. Uh, maybe you're following that. I'm focusing on this one. So Ikins' attack actually done a lot of damage, but um, he's lost all of his ravages that were at the front. Um, but coming out to take the north, it looks like he's forming up here. Uh, if we go back to his queue, he's still got one. One Ravage queued up, but his factory's on repeat, so that's all he's going to build now forever. Um, Ravage is putting up a, a very spirited defense of the pass here, but uh, now that El Torero has a lot of Ravagers, well, a few Ravagers, they're coming back through, and yeah, all of this stuff is now in danger. However, Rickens manages to have three Ravagers at once coming from his, his central base. Uh, um, with these four Ravagers uh, already hurting badly, these three will probably, uh, the, the Ikens' three will probably win out over them, but not if they don't actually engage them, if they just go straight past them. That's that's not going to work well. And so they have a pretty clear run to the base now. There are defences there and Lotus is uh, picking off the, the weakened ones. And so they're running away, but oh, they easily could have taken that Lotus if they'd uh, concentrated their fire. But now they're pinned down by a lot of Ravagers. Uh, they're all dead. Meanwhile, this attack from the north, uh, having already taken out all of the northern metal points, uh, coming into the main base. Getting badly hurt by uh, superior numbers over here. Uh, being pushed out, it's going to be able to take out a few metal extractors as they go past. Um, but ultimately, that's a fail attack on the base, though. Um, however, it's still good at keeping El Torero down in the north. Um, both players, of course, lacking their command, and now they're down to masons for expansion, which is a lot harder because the masons just can't defend themselves. Um, El Torero already sending one out this way to retake those mass points in the corner. But Ikin's doing the same thing, so we'll see who gets there first and what happens. Um, El Torero has dual fact while nobody was looking. He's got two shadows, a third one coming up. Obviously he's not going to want to send those in one at a time. He's going to wait until he has a good force. Uh, and then surprise Ikin's with them, perhaps by taking out his factory. Um, Shadow Bomb is good for, for large targets like the factory. Under um, the, the two Lotuses are uh, no, no defense against that kind of attack. So uh, if it's a successful surprise, if the surprise is complete, as the military types say, then that could well win him the game. Uh, but at the moment his Ravagers 
walking into a far superior force and getting completely wiped out. A bit of friendly fire going on with Dickens' Ravagers, so they're actually all a lot weaker than... Um, or they've taken more damage than the Reds had any right to inflict, and... Alterero Shadows have been exposed there, taking out that, uh, that Mason in the north, because he didn't really have anything else to deal with that. Um, but we'll see if Ickins noticed it. He, he might not have seen them appear in and out of, uh, out of his vision. But, oh, he can't help but notice it now. Right where he's looking, there's a shadow flying over his ravages. Taking out one at a time is no good. Um, but we see there's a Lico coming up for El Torero. El Torero's economic advantage is now very slight. Uh, as Ickins has managed to take the south. <laughs> However, his Mason's about to die to a Lotus, and uh, doesn't look like Ickens has realised what's going on there. He's too busy concentrating on his attack force. Uh, Shadow's making very quick runs, but uh, not very effective. Well, that one was. Because it takes them a long time to re-aim if uh, an attack is successful. See this one still flying around trying to find a target. And it takes several runs to destroy one and the airplane plant is down. So there's going to be no Lico and there's also going to be no rearming for the shadows that are already there. That's a big loss for El Torero strategically. Um, yeah, reclaim it, one of the spectators uh, sprang is advising and that would have been a good idea, but I think it's a bit too late now, Ickins is, uh, but, you know, what, that's been the cost of Ickins focusing on uh, his main attack, which has been very, very effective. Um, almost dead now because of uh, just the sheer force of ravages on El Torero's side, but look at the damage it's caused. Um, that's, that's really going to be a problem for El Torero. Uh, and especially as he has no masons at the moment, he's building one up quickly. Um, he needs to get that reclaim, though he's pretty close to accessing on mass at the moment. Oh well, no, he's still about 0.8 down. Um, but yeah, he needs to be building loads of stuff, he needs to be getting the mo making most of this reclaim that's found its way into his base. Uh, But Ickens already has his next attack underway, uh, so perhaps El Torero won't even have Pork Mode activated, says El Torero. Uh, and he's building a Stardust. Stardust not great against Ravagers, which are pretty heavy units. Stardust is uh, best against large numbers of light units, but we'll see how that turns out. Um, I would recommend the Stinger against Ravagers, but in the kind of, the kind of numbers that we're seeing here, um, the reload time of a stinger might be uh, might make it a bit useless in this situation. And the ravages are now in range of the Stardust, but they are they are um, taking plenty of damage from them. The, the short range of the Stardust is uh, making them. Uh, well, it's giving the Ravagers the chance to, to run away and, and hang around outside, but the, the Ravagers don't want to hang around outside. That's not where the interesting stuff is. That's not going to finish off the battle. Oh, El Torero managed to assemble three Masons and quickly put together another airplane plant to allow his existing shadows to reload and to uh, build a new Lico, which wants another 10 seconds. Um, one Ravager coming in this way for a bit of raiding. Doesn't look like it's going to make it all the way, though... Um, Oh uh, yeah, one shadow missed, one hit. Liko now coming out. And it's going for the, the main body of these Ravagers. Missed by a mile there. Um, so the, the Liko has been exposed, or disclosed rather, uh, for, for practically no gain. So it looks like this airplane plant is also going to die. Oh no, the second Lego attack uh, hit, very successful. Only two Ravagers left, and they're playing uh, Pink Panther, or round and round the Mulberry Bush if you prefer, with the uh, with the red 
Ravagers, um, but they can't play that game with the shadows, which just fly over them and drop bombs. Uh, Liko going for some more incoming Ravagers. Ravagers, uh, or, or the Rickens, is seeing that this airplane pl plant is a big threat and also a big opportunity to, uh, to safeguard himself. And the airplane plant is down for the second time, so that's no more rearming for the Liko or the uh, the Shadows. El Torero's economic advantage is back down. Oh, in fact, it's turned into a disadvantage. Uh, it can now somewhat ahead on metal, as El Torero doesn't have either corner. But it does have the two uh, massifs in the centre. Uh, this Liko now use it, being used as a scout. As it doesn't have anything else to do, it's got no weapons, no way to rearm until this airplane plant is ready. Coming back now. Another 30 seconds, we'll see it uh, ready to reload. So another force coming in. That's five Ravagers and four Slashes this time as well. The Slashes will really help out against, um, well, against the Stardust in particular. Uh, El Torero's promise of pork mode has, has been pretty weak actually, apart from those Stardust that he built. Um, there's not much going on there, there's a Lotus at the end here, but uh, he's no better defended than he was for the last attack. Um, El Torero is still doing lots of building and using his Masons to get some reclaim now. Uh, plenty of caretakers to help him spend that metal that he's reclaiming. Of course, that's uh, even though he's on the the back foot, he does have a bit of an advantage in that respect. In that uh, he can just keep sending metal into his base. Um, Ikens really, oh yeah, doing a bit more raiding here to to cut down Alterero's metal supply um, and energy if he goes to this massif. Ikens actually uh, does have one further advantage now, which is he has more territorial control. El Torero finding it very difficult to get units out of his base right now, so Ikens could reasonably take a lot of these metal points, um, especially the ones in the corners, in relative safety. Um, though he just doesn't have enough engineers right now, he's having to pump all of his economy into Ravagers to, to keep the pressure up on El Torero. And, uh, yeah, he's, he's still only building Ravagers. And he could really do with two or three extra Masons right now. Though reclaiming his commander there, that's going to get him some metal in the short term. Uh, yeah, helping him to spend 25. But this is where all the reclaim is. There's... 2,000 metal in this reclaim field. Oh, and a Strider hub coming up as well. And it's set to patrol at the moment. Interesting use uh, of a Strider hub. It's a rather expensive caretaker. But it's going for a Dante. Uh, yeah, I thought that had to be coming. Uh, Oh yes, this airplane plant now up. Uh, Liko is busy uh, taking all the repair slots. Because they have lots of health, Liko do take uh, quite a while to repair, which is can be bad if you have uh, if you have no air repair pad and you have other bombers waiting to be reloaded, like Shadows, uh, which should only take a second. They all end up queuing and waiting for two or three minutes while the Liko gets repaired. Um, El, T oh, El Torero uh, managing to spend all of his metal of course because of his Dante and because of all of these caretakers he's got going uh, and now two masons going around building solar collectors but it looked for a while like he was going to excess on metal um, and the reclaim starts again so a bit of a pause there actually in Ikens' attack area he has in fact adjusted his queue to build more masons and uh, doing some reclaim and also repairing his existing units in the center there that's a good use 
Um, repairing is, is economical compared to just building more units. It also has the advantage that you're not leaving their metal behind in the enemy's base, which uh, of course has been a big problem for him so far. And um, they also let your units gain more veterancy, uh, such as this one, which could morph into a Reaper right now. Uh, very bad formation going on here. He's uh, spread out, which is helping him to avoid the Lico, which did a very bad job there uh, with not many targets. Um, but it's also meaning they've been taken on one by one by the, the, the ravages of El Torero, uh, rather than all of them being able to fire at once. So El Torero uh, kind of coming up on, on this battle. But the reinforcements arriving for Higgins, and now of course uh, Higgins has managed to decoy El Torero into the range of his slashers. Leveler as well. Leveler is not so useful against Ravagers because they just don't have enough damage. Uh, and they're just not as strong, so they, they can't go toe to toe with Ravagers. Um, however, these slashes will be very useful. Um, Dante wants another five minutes, well, five to seven minutes, depending on how well uh, El Torero manages to reclaim. If we look at here, if we take a new reclaim map, that's 4,000 metal basically within range of, of El Torero's base. Um, it's not quite the area that he's free to operate in because he, he is getting harassed from this side occasionally. Unit under attack. Uh, some <laughs> reclaim racing going on here, but El Torero's mason terraforming uh, Ikenz's mason into a hole there so it can't continue. That's uh, very good work from El Torero who has in this game, he's shown a lot more, a lot more uh, battlefield awareness than uh, Nickens, uh, who's been stuck concentrating on uh, on only one part of the battlefield at a time. Uh, another Lico coming up, but in five minutes. So it looks like Athens is going to get flanked again by El Torero here. But uh, actually El Torero is formation not that good. These these outer Ravagers not even attacking at all. Well they are just now. But they weren't it when there, there was a flank going on. Uh, Ikens getting stuck between the wrecks. Obviously his, his Mason earlier not managing to do enough reclaiming. Torero's units are pinned down by uh, Ikenz's Ravagers on both sides, making up for that flank earlier. But the Lika comes in, that's two Ravagers though with one shot. Um, yeah, I've already said what I have to say about Ravagers versus Levelers. army of masons here. I don't know why they're, they're thinking of lining up like that, but um, actually it's just making it much easier for the Ravagers to destroy them. No, you can't run away like that. However, it has bought them some time for the Lico to, well, not quite take out one more this time. Um, however, on the other side of the map, uh, El Torero has managed to get three Ravages through the middle, uh, through that bloodbath that was going on earlier. Uh, but not pressing an attack with them, one of them is very badly hurting, but with three levels of veterancy it could morph. Um, well, they're still see or hearing rather the, the sounds of the, the uh, mason slaughter going on the other side of the map. Um, Ikin's being forced to come back here to, to examine his base when he wants to concentrate on 
on this attack. Um, but they're doing good work. They, they can be left alone for a while. Uh, yeah, a bit of raiding going on here for, for El Zerrero. The sponge saying Ickins did not raid enough. Um, uh, it sounds like the game is already uh, over as far as he's concerned. Uh, uh, I'm pointing out some targets that Ickins could easily take here. Yeah, especially while his mason is stuck in a hole like that. Um, <coughs> uh, allowing El Torero to, uh, to, to raid all of his outlying mexes there. It's not good. Um, and of course it's also keeping Ickens' Ravagers pinned near his base because they can't leave it unattended in case the, 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 uh, the Red Ravagers come back. One lone Ravager here attacking this um, this little encampment, I suppose is what you call it. Um, it's just not not heavily defended enough. Um, and El Torero's Ravagers giving Ickens is the run around and also keeping an eye on where they are means that the Licos have more opportunities to come out and shoot them. Dante nearly up now, wants less than 30 seconds and uh, when that comes out uh, I expect it will be game over as there's nowhere near enough stuff in Ickens' base to deal with that. Mind you, there's not even enough stuff there to deal with all of the Red Ravagers that are on the map. Um, but of course El Torero is not going to want to attack now when his super weapon's nearly ready. So the question really is, how long will it be before Ikens realises that there's a Dante incoming? Um, he's really not attacking strongly in this game. He's um, yeah, he's letting his, his Ravagers walk around outside and get picked off one by one by Lico shots. That's that's not good tactics. Um, he really should either put some anti-air with them so they can walk around with impunity or send them very quickly and directly into Elta River space so they have their minimum of losses on the way there. Um, Elta Rero's army of engineers to purify the soil. Uh, I've, I've got a very large uh, reclaim radius there. And they're fueling El Torero's economy. They're why he's on 33 metal now, which is more than twice, uh, more than twice Ikins' metal income. That's why El Torero has a Dante and Ikins does not. So uh, the Lico is now coming in for the first time towards Ikins' base. Um, fitting that they do that with a Dante attack. Um, if we look at Ickens' view, he, he's just now aware that the Dante is coming in. Oh, El Torero also is slightly spoiling the surprise there by announcing it. And the Dante is here. Goodbye, Ickens. Um, I get the impression the only reason he hasn't resigned yet is to... Oh yes, there you go. To not spoil El Torero's fun, I was going to say, but uh, El Torero's had enough fun now, and it's game over for Rickens. So yeah, uh, a slightly drawn out game. El Torero showing good battlefield awareness, uh, retaking those corners uh, for the outlying mass, the outlying metal. Um, Ikins doing some strong attacking, uh, doing well to, to get lots of ravages to the gates of El Torero's base to, to keep up the pressure for a while, but ultimately um, not being able to see what was going on around the outside and uh, a failure to, 
change tactics really in response to the bomber threat uh, lost him this game. So I hope you've enjoyed watching it. I hope you've learned from those mistakes. I know I have. And uh, I'll see you in the battlefield next time.